So it's a pretty cold day, but gorgeous sunshine in Lake Country here. And we just picked up a neat little project, little Mazda MX-3. We're having fun converting to electric. <laughs> <laughs> So Brian, tell us all about this little Mazda. Well, I saw this advertised on uh, Facebook Marketplace there about uh, a month and a half ago. And uh, it was a guy down in Vancouver and he had uh, this project, which was done about, I would say about 10, 11 years ago. Well, that's an old conversion, It's an old eh? conversion, Yikes. yeah. Uh, but it did look like a lot of the same equipment that you would have had in your old neon project right. from back in the day. Right, right. Uh, it looked like uh, there's quite a bit of material in there that would have uh, uh, been bought from Can EV back in the day. Very similar yeah, equipment from to what you Todd had. and Randy. Totally, yeah. Um, but yeah, so this car, uh, it was a cheap, cheap uh, EV conversion. That I got it cheap because the batteries are pretty much knackered. Yeah, it? that's yeah. the problem. The, ba Early the batteries are technology old. Technology on the batteries. Yeah, the batteries last are old. Very long. Yeah, the, the, so the, they're uh, the, they're past the best, but uh, it's still drivable. The car drives great and it handles great. It's really well put together. It was built originally by an aircraft maintenance engineer and his machinist buddy. Uh, so two guys. And that's a good combination. That's a good combination, yeah. <laughs> so they, they, uh, they built the car really well uh, to the point where it's actually registered as an EV. So they went through all the steps to and all the inspections to get it registered as an electric vehicle. And um, But like I say, the car itself looks like it would back in 1994. Uh, it's got no rust on it, which is a bonus, but she's a little tired. It's got a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the scratches. Yeah, and the paint's flaking the paint's a bit and flaking. stuff. And... It's just a little <laughs> rough looking, but uh, uh, mechanically the car's in great shape. Um, minor things that you would expect from an older car, like a CV joint needs replaced on it, but otherwise it's, it's a good, uh, good driver. Um, the car itself has got a, a, an AC, an HP EVS a, AC50 electric motor. So it's an AC motor, it's got regen. A different style regen than we did on the Fargo and a different style regen that you would find on a lot of uh, yeah, commercial cool. vehicles. Yeah, So it's got a... It's what all, did you say about this? Um, it's a regen on brake there. Kind of so like a throttle. It's almost like a throttle there that you can activate the regen manually which is kind of neat. So you can use that to slow the car down and then uh, uh, use the brakes uh, at the last second there to stop the, to stop the uh, car. <laughs> um, it does have a power brake system, uses a little uh, a electric pump, much the same as the uh, Fargo project does. And uh, this one has, actually has a, an electric Toyota uh, branded uh, power steering pump. So they actually retained the power steering rack and just powered it using an electric power steering Trying pump. Trying to make everything is, electric. It's very cool, yeah. So the drivability of the car, I mean, it feels like you're driving in a gas-powered car, but everything's electric. Uh, it's got a nice little setup here for the gauges. So it's got your, your uh, a percent battery life up here. It's got your voltage, amps draw, and then battery health there as well. Also has a huge emergency shut-off here that you can use in an emergency, but uh, if you're doing maintenance on the car as well, you can pull that out and it'll disconnect the uh, um, the, the batteries. Now remember, you have to install that uh, per code for sure to get it insured. Yeah. So then this thing here, uh, they gave give me this harness so I can actually uh, plug in here. But you can see it was a maintenance engineer from an aircraft because those are ma aircraft cannon. Plugs. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so. Uh, We've got access to the uh, controller through this little unit here and we can plug it into a laptop and uh, reprogram our uh, a controller. Oh, very good. Which very is pr pretty nice. cool, yeah. yeah. But you can see it's standard transmission. Uh, it drives with the standard transmission or you can leave it in second or third gear and go. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if you look in the back seat here, this is where they kept the uh, part of the battery pack. So if I flip this seat forward, I've already taken the bolts out of this so we can uh, see the batteries. Okay. But if you can see there, can you see those batteries? Yeah. Yeah. So good shot. They're, they're, they're a little old. So these are 100 amp hour um, individual cells. I think they're done by Thunder Sky. I mean, they're old. They still work, but they just don't have the capacity anymore. 
Uh, these little chips are an older style BMS system, it's called a mini BMS. Uh, they monitor individual cells and that information is sent to the to the to basically the main BMS unit which is actually under the, the hood. Again, it's a very small unit, very basic, nothing like the Orion systems that the, you and I have been playing with recently. So. Right. Yeah, that could this could definitely do with an upgrade, but a really nice little install here. Yeah, can we the, get some uh, Tesla, Tesla modules in there? Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you can fit them anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. So then that just needs to be bolted back down, and then that hides underneath the, the back seat. Yeah, it's well done, eh? Yeah. You can actually use the back seat. Totally. So then, and in, in the trunk area still is still usable as well. Uh, you can see we've got three charge units. A very interesting setup because both the the Beetle project, your old Neon, and the Fargo project, all of those projects have a single uh, Elcon charger. But this unit has an Elcon charger, but then it's got these two quick Q chargers. Um, we've got the, this little unit back here, you can just see down the back there. So those units are little pre-scalers. Um, that's to give our information to the gauges that are up front there, so we can monitor the charge input. And uh, the pre-scalers are also hooked up through the BMS there as well. <laughs> Look at the guy's extension cord hanging on, hang on yeah, the, so, on the yeah. so this guy, that guy we could plug with in a 110, uh, and it's also connected through a J1772 port here as well. So this little unit here is the AVC2. Yeah. Up top here. Uh, so when you plug the car in through the standard J1772 port here, let's open it up here, you can see right here. So if you plug a plug in here with a standard charger, it, go, it communicates through this AVC2 unit and uh, it will activate the chargers here through the J1772 or you can bypass that completely and charge through a 110. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a neat setup. Which I found was quite nice with the with my Neon, yeah. having that 110 ability. Right. It was good. I get, I get rid of the char the J1772. It, it came actually with a J1772 plug that had a, a, a 110 end on it so oh, you okay. could plug it into a wall. But, uh, I chopped that one up because I'm using it in a Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is uh, just looking under the hood here. You can see again how well engineered this whole setup was. We've got additional batteries under here uh, that complement the battery pack in the back there. We've got our DC to DC converter here, which uh, keeps our 12 volt battery charged. Um, this is the little power steering unit I was telling you about from a Toyota. I think yeah, uh, when, a shot on that. Yeah, when I looked it online, it came out of a Toyota MR2. This little guy here, so that's that's uh, you can see that runs up into this main control box. Now I've taken the bolts out of the main control box so we can have a quick peek inside. Right. So if I lift this, there we go. So this is what's inside this control box. This is a vacuum pump. So when you turn the car on, this activates to uh, power up the booster on the brake uh, system there, the brake booster. So we have power brakes like the regular car had. Uh, this is our Curtis AC controller. That looks familiar. Very familiar. It's the same unit that you had in your Neon and the one that we're using on the, uh, the Beetle. We've got our crash sensor. So this is our little um, a inertia switch. And you can see again, this is indications that it was an ma aircraft maintenance engineer that put it together. These are a circuit breakers out of an aircraft, <laughs> which are kind of neat. The wiring is nice and tidy. We've got a contactor here. We've got a couple of shunts on there as well. Mm -hmm. And you can see it's got a little fan. So he's actually bringing air in and blowing air across all of this equipment and out the back there to keep it nice and cool. So That's a pretty yeah. nice setup. It is a nice setup. He's got a little heater uh, a contactor down here as well. So there is a heater in the car as well. But you can just see down the bottom there, it's a little uh, AC50 motor. It's very small compared, it's quite a bit shorter than the AC75 that you had on your uh, Neon. Mm -hmm. And it's coupled up to the 94 um, GS, uh, it's called a G5M Mazda transmission. Five so they probably built that plate. plate. I think so, yeah. The transmission and the motor. Yeah, well you see all the other aluminum machining yeah. that's done on it there. Know, it's, so it's, uh, it's pretty well built. So yeah, but yeah, we could take it for a quick spin. Sure, let's do that. All right. So this is uh, inside the car here. It's kind of neat. If I turn it on, the car is on. Right, you can just hear a little bit of a whine from the uh, the power steering pump. But uh, right here I've got my discharge and my charge for the amp draw. Again, the batteries are weak, so I'm going to try and keep the 100 amp hour uh, discharge around the 100 amp mark. 
When you accelerate, of course, you're going to draw more. But what I find is that this car gets angry if you try and sustain a, a, a you know, a C2 or a C3 discharge, which is two or three times the battery rating. Doesn't like it. Uh, right here, I can show 124.2 volts on here. If I change the, the menu. Let me see here, this one. There we go. Uh, right now, it's drawing 2.9 amps, probably because it's running the pump uh, for the first hearing. Uh, the battery is 83, 88.3%. So there we go. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the battery percentage up. Right here, I've got RPM set up. I can use this little it's button. Attack. It does, yeah. <laughs> uh, RPM for the for the motor, amps, voltage, and the motor temperature right now is four degrees. Controller temperature nine degrees. So we'll have a look at that when we come back. I'm probably sure it's probably warmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've got my e-brake off again. This is my little regen unit. <laughs> That's something. But I can throw it in first gear, and away we go. Like, why would you even bother with the regen? You just want it on all the time, you know? <laughs> so like, this thing coasts, but I can use the regen to stop the car. Oh, it's really aggressive. Only at low speed. Here we are, we're just, uh, you know, cruising along. It's drawing 150 amps. But yeah, if I keep that amp draw nice and uh, uh, steady there, I'm in second gear. It's not winning any races, this thing. So if, oh, I, no. take, yeah, if I take my foot off the brake or, or the, the accelerator there, and I put my foot back down again, it, ex it accelerates, but it it's not it's not a, a race car by any stretch. What's the imagine. regen do right now? Did so if I hit the regen, there you go. That's max regen right now. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. If you're, it's not so aggressive. Not so aggressive yeah. <laughs> Electric zero emission vehicle, go green.